Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome to FX Maniac. This is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri again and welcome to another really cool tutorial where I'll show you guys how to create sand using Typeflow. So I'm just gonna, I've just created this and I'm just gonna play the simulation for you. You can see it's looking pretty cool. Although we don't have a lot of detail, but you know, we're having some realistic looking sand. You know, the, the, the thing about sand is you want to have these clusters of sand. I mean, that's what's going to make it look very realistic and give it that sort of a volumey, I don't know, sandy sort of thick look. So uh, that's what we're going for. And I have a frame rendered, so it's going to it's going to look pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, let's get started with this. So, uh, I mean, of course, you can go ahead and increase the number of particles and get some really beautiful and high quality sand effects. But in this case, uh, I think for the tutorial's sake, it was just fine. So you can take a look from a few different angles. You can see that it is falling down into uh, falling in a form of clusters and then falling down and you know just breaking those uh, binds of the clusters. All right, so enough talking, let's get started. I'm gonna go into file reset and I do wanna save this and I do want to reset. So it is going to be a very very simple setup. So let's get into 3D Studio Max. First off I'm going to go ahead and create my uh, uh, ground plane. So just uh, create a little ground. Make sure it is big enough so that it just kind of um, encompasses the whole area and I'm going to be using V-Ray. So let's just set up the uh, renderer to be V-Ray 5 and let's just close this and this one and I'm just going to go to add a standard legacy material make it a bit darker and the next thing I want to do is create my steps so uh, I mean it would look pretty cool if you know we have some like steps so that the sand can fall down from one step to another I just thought it would look cool so I'm just gonna go and just uh, draw like a box like that maybe like this and just kind of increase uh, sorry duplicate it move it up and just duplicate it like that so you want to kind of like make it in a, in a in a sequential sort of order and move this up and one last one so just like that move it like here so this is going to be our steps so the sand is going to fall down onto one step and then on to the other and then on to the other so you can make it however you like but I think this is gonna look cool all right um, maybe just give him a little bit of a distance so that they have some space to fall down all right I'm gonna create my object so I have this uh, I've just developed this uh, weird uh, intention to uh, <laughs> use this torus knot as my objects so it just has this cool shape so just uh, it's looking cool. I'm just gonna drag one out and just like move it here. All right, we can make it a little bit less thick. Move it up, and that's it. All right. So the thing you want to do is now you can go ahead and uh, start creating your tie flow. So just create that, and I'm gonna be it's gonna be a very simple setup. So let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, first off. I want to burst some particles using this object so uh, the best way to do it in this case is birth voxels so you're gonna pick your object and it's just gonna create some particles using the shape of that object in a form of voxels so a uh, voxels is in a way like Phoenix FD so like the more you decrease the voxel size the more detail you're gonna have but of course the more time it's going to take to process. The next thing I'm going to do is add a sphere, uh, sorry, a shape node. It's late at night. I'm a little confused, so sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to go with 3D and make it a geosphere low res because they're going to be really small particles and we don't really need a lot of detail. So you can see that I was looking, it's taking the shape of the object, but if you want it to be more, uh, you know, detailed you can just take this to like what two for now I think two is a little too much so 2.3 maybe just like that the other thing you want to do is add a particle physics so 
what particle physics does is it creates like physics between the different particles so they're just going to collide with each other I'm just going to go into the time configuration and turn this off right it is going to make them explode just like that but we don't want that we don't want them to explode right off the bat so what I'm going to do is just go into the collide radius and set it to shape radius so they'll be together until something happens so maybe I'll set this to 3 for now alright so they're not sort of exploding at the beginning the other thing I'm going to do is add a force operator for it to add some gravity so just uh, make it like a negative 0.3 so it is falling down now just like that and now we want them to collide with those steps so the thing I'm going to do is I want to make uh, all these steps a single object so just right click convert it to edible poly attach and add all of these objects alright so now all of them are just a single object that we can add into the collision operator so I'm just gonna add hit tab collision and pick this and pick the ground I'll make the ground a little bit bigger and like that so we have a lot of space to work with so now if I play this you can see that the particles are just you know colliding with the with those colliders with those objects which is really nice and you're getting what you would expect out of it you know they're just like colliding with that object you know maybe if you make these colliders a little bit uh, like thicker on the width so now if I play this you can see that they are sort of colliding with those objects and just falling down you know but they're not really having that sort of uh, you know um, sandy sort of thick uh, together clustery look I don't know what I'm talking about but those are the things that we're gonna set up alright so the thing we want to do is I'm going to add a particle bind and what particle binds does uh, as the name suggests it just creates bindings between the particles so now they're like binded together and they the binds won't just break so they're looking like you know meat I don't know something but there's a very weird problem here you can see that they're going through the shape and that's because if you go into the poly, uh, the collision, we need to set this to shape radius. So they'll be a lot more accurate. So it just calculates here. So now you can see that that problem is gone. They're not going through the object, but still we have the problem of it, like, you know, just hanging there. It's, it doesn't look like, it looks like a big sort of something that you wear on your neck, which... Uh, is not, is not the thing that we're looking for so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the particle bind make sure it is uh, below everything else and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and turn on uh, breakable so that the binds are sort of breakable so now we can see that the bindings between the object they do break as they sort of you know collide and fall down but we're you know we're back to square one you know they're just colliding and you know sort of shooting out they're not really sticking together when we want them to so we have this really cool parameter here if I go here it's the distance multiplier so the distance that the particles are having when they're kind of like creating those binds so the more you increase this the more uh, you know you're gonna have you're going to increase the distance between the bindings of the particles and it's going to look more sort of like clustered together which even though it's not right now so you know we will do some other things but you can go ahead and play around with this so I'm going to make it like 2.5 and uh, let's see here so now we've uh, increased the distance multiplier and I think now we're getting a lot more of that clustery sort of look you can see that they're sticking much more together because we've just increased the distance multiplier and uh, if you want even more of that clustery look so we need to do one more thing we have an operator called cluster 
so just uh, add it in there and the thing is going to do is that it's going to create like clusters uh, cluster shapes between the particles so they are going to form in that kind of shape so if I go into the cluster and visualize the cluster you can see that we have those clusters I think it's ca calculating here you can see that we have these clusters and these particles and uh, that's what necessarily these are the shapes that the particles are going to take so this is going to be one big chunk this is going to be one big chunk and this is going to be another chunk so you can you can uh, out of all of these the Voronoi cell seems to be the better one you can try different ones but I think uh, playing around with it I found that this one was really the best one and you can increase the count of them so you can increase it to like a hundred which then we're gonna have a lot more of those clusters yeah so as you can see now we have more clusters and you can definitely turn down the size to like 50 so that it just shrinks down the cluster shape and we're gonna have a lot more clusters yeah so that is our cluster so now let's see here how they are gonna look with those clusters so just just play this and I'm just gonna let this cache and I'll be back when it is done alright so the simulation is done and you can see now our particles are much more sticking together so if I go into the cluster operator and just like turn off visualize clusters so you can see that they're sticking a lot more together and uh, you know they're looking really nice I would say you know you know these pieces but you do need to increase the size uh, I mean the count a lot to get smaller like pieces and of course once you sort of increase the uh, decrease the voxel size you're gonna have a lot more particles and it's gonna look a lot more better alright and the other thing you want to do is uh, you can still go ahead and play around with the particle bind I mean I would increase the stretch to like 8 uh, or even 10 and that's gonna make it a lot more I mean it's gonna make it a bit more harder to break the binds you know they're gonna have to be stretched uh, a bit more in order to in order for the binds to get broken alright and the other thing I want to do is definitely increase the distance multiplier to like 3 so uh, they're gonna have some more distance so they're gonna be more thicker and joint and cluster together alright so let's see here so now you can definitely see that they are sort of sticking together you know like a, in a very realistic way and of course when you increase the number of particles uh, that'll look a lot more cooler so you can you can increase the number of particles by decreasing your voxel size so I would just like put this uh, I would just set this to like 2.4 or something and real quickly I'm just gonna add some materials to it so that it looks kind of like sand you know different random uh, sort of color materials so what I'm going to do is uh, of course I'm using V-Ray so I'm just gonna hit M and I'm just gonna drag out a V-Ray material just uh, uh, shrink this down double click and I'll add a sort of orangish yellow color but let's saturate it and I'm just gonna duplicate it and just create a few shades of this like lighter and probably like shift drag it a bit darker and saturate it like that and one more for good measure so I'm just gonna add like a very lighter one just like that and a bit like this so you can play around with it and now I'm just going to add a multi sub object material and just uh, you know set this to four because we have four materials and just link that all out here and I'm just going to add it to my tie flow so just click and add but it's not taking the four materials because we need to add hit tab and add a material ID to it so once you add the material ID you can set it to have all those materials you know you can set tie flow to use all those materials so I'm, j I'm just gonna set it to static uh, sorry random and then set it to like one two four because we have four materials alright so let's take a look and uh, 
I think we have now like a very realistic looking sand. It looks like, you know, real. I mean, that's what we want to do. And of course, you can go ahead and increase the number of particles and add and do some lighting. So now it's looking really cool in the viewport. You know, that looks like sand, man. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned something from it. And if you find this useful, it would just mean a lot to me if you go ahead into my YouTube channel and subscribe if you haven't already and like my video so that it just, you know, kind of recommends to a lot of other people. And, uh, you know, that will help me a lot uh, to continue making these awesome tutorials for you people. And you can support me on my second channel, Audio Aura. We provide high quality, royalty free, no copyright music for content creators so you can go ahead and use them and you can go ahead and follow me on Instagram effects with Sayed if you like and uh, that is it and uh, this was the today's tutorial hope you enjoyed it until the next one enjoy working